All right, what's up guys? So, the end of the hunt with the Oryx in New Mexico. Um, let's talk about the gun first, okay? I did the video on 6.5 Creedmoor on elk. It's been my most popular video, so thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. Um, we all know that Oryx are tough. They're, they're freaking tough animals. Their heart is not behind the shoulder, it's in their shoulder. So they're just an absolutely tough animal. And I've heard for years that it takes a 300 wind mag or a seven mag. And so we did that. We, we ran the numbers like I talked about with the speed and the foot pounds of energy. And Sway and I decided that we didn't want to shoot at one past 600 yards with, with, um, with the 6.5 Creedmoor. So we used the 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, this was built by a buddy of mine. Um, it's a Remington 700 PTG action, uh, Rock Creek barrel, APA brake. This is um, a Harris bipod with, what are these feet? Uh, those are the spike. Spike, spike tactical, I guess. Spike nice. tactical, spike feet. Um, Manners, carbon fiber, EH2 stock. Um, I, I guess it's the, it's the carbon, I mean, it's the Gen 2. Um, 6.5 Creedmoor, and it's got the new Night Force NX-8. Um, it's a mill scope. It's a two and a half to 20. First, I'll tell you this night force scope was pretty amazing. What do you think? It was, it was good. The ga the glass is super clear. Yeah. The, the glass is really clear. I had my, I just got a pair of, of Leica, the HDB 10 by 42, three thousands. I've been wanting them for like 15 years. I finally got them and they're a little more clear than this but but this is super clear so when we, we would have, find them we also have more power so I yeah mean, it's kind of hard to compare a 10 by 42 by a you know but i can tell you plenty. i had the bushnell um elite on my 6.5 prc that we had with us as a backup gun then the bushnell versus the night force is like you know like a <laughs> versus the the low-end vortex yeah. um so i'm a huge fan of this night force scope man this is um it's a very clear optic but anyway he was 440 meters exactly um, when when Sway shot at him. That's 481 yards. What was your dope? Do you remember? Uh, what did you say he was for? He was 481 yards. The first shot. So we doped. So we doped. One eight. One eight is what it was doped at. One eight, and and he hit him that first shot and plugged him right through the heart, and so. Yeah. He went up again at 500, and then he shot him again, and I thought he missed, but he shot him again right up just on this other side, and the Oryx went down just over a hill where we he couldn't like see. Was five, 540 whenever he moved? He ran about 100 yards. Yeah, and then he was uh, he was 480, 84 meters then, so he was like 520, 530. So like at 5, 5, yeah, I think you called out 530, so at 530, I went up i went to 2.6 mil 2.6 mil and then he hammered him again and that's something that you guys got to really pay attention to is when an animal a deer an elk it doesn't matter you know oryx and mule deer for sure now elk sometimes white tails 50 50 but follow them in your scope even when they're running don't shoot at them just follow them and just be waiting on them to stop because a lot of times they'll stop and look back at you and when they do you have that brief second to hammer them right and that's what he did on that 500 yard shot he had already been hit once and he ran, he, he probably really ran about 60 yards. It just, you know, just away from us like this. And uh, I told Sway, just shoot him one more time. So he shot him one more time. He walked about four steps and sat down. We waited there for about five minutes and he died. Um, but uh, anyway, the 6.5 Creedmoor will do it. I mean, this is proof. I mean, we can shoot. It, it went in his pump house. It hit him right in the heart, but it absolutely killed him at uh, 481 yards. Well, when they're far, when they're far all that out, that's why we had a follow-up shot because we know we made a good shot on him, but they're so tough that, I mean, let's say we thought we had a good shot and we could have put him down quicker, you know? So that's the only reason why we let another one fly. And that's, that's always important, guys. If you have a shooter and a spotter, is the shooter don't worry about where he made that hit. So he tells me where he shot. I'm watching and he's racking another round in and getting back on target while I'm calling his correction. And then as soon as he's, as soon as the animal, the animal's always going to, if, if you hit him, he'll stop again. You just have to be patient. Once he stopped, Trey already knows, you know, I didn't even have to call out and ask him what he was. He said it was 530. I went up a couple more mills to two, two, one, two, two, somewhere around in there. And 
we and I we just slung another one at him. But uh, had we not hit him the second time, he was he he was in the process of going. Yeah, down. he was going to die either way. We didn't have to shoot him the second time, but if an animal's up, I tr I try to get him the second time. Um, but anyway, so this is a this is you know another amazing time. Oryx is is something that I've chased for a long time. Um, we'll show some of them bloopers where where we messed up on some stuff. Maybe we'll do another little video. But this is uh this was a great hunt. It was a lot of fun. And the six five Creedmoor. It'll do it. Yeah, 140, 143 ELD, 2,800 feet per second, ADG brass, hand loaded. Um, I mean, it. Here, here she is. Put the hammer down. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, share this with everybody, and ponder on it.